Hello everyone, my name is Urgo Josh and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to tell you guys about my new brushes. They're actually skin brushes for use in Procreate. Um, I just released these uh, this weekend on Sunday, but I wanted to make this video so that you guys could see um, how I would use them in my day-to-day -day portraits. So I have four brushes here, Sparkle, Dusty Glitter, Soft Skin, and Hard Skin. And so I'm going to show you how I'd use each one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a black background for this first layer here so that we can see the brushes a little bit more easy. And then I'm going to switch to a white color and then paint directly on top of that and select my sparkle brush. So as you can see for this brush, it has a very smooth um, application and it has a nice even gradient for the edges. So it's much more color in the center of the brush versus fading out at the back or the edges. And as you can see, my favorite part about this brush is it has a lot of varying levels of brightness and then it kind of fades into the background for some of the edges. This is a brush I would use for a lot of your glistening um, areas in skin that's very oily or sweaty or even a beginning of creating a base for areas for highlighter makeup of that kind of thing on the face, which you know I love to add in my portraits, even if it's not there in the reference. So if we look at the next brush, it's actually another glitty br glitter brush called Dusty Glitter. Now this brush is a lot more intense and a lot more even. If I increase the size here, you can see that this is how it looks. It looks like a cluster of equally sized dots together, but some of them fade in the background as well. How I like to use this brush is I like to make the size smaller and I like to use it in areas where there's a lot of reflection in a tiny area. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Billie Eilish drawing that I recently did and show you exactly where I use this brush. Let me switch to the layer. And this brush, I used it in the corner of the eye here. You can see that's where a lot of portraits you'll notice there's a lot of reflection there because um, a lot of sweat and tears can collect in that area and make that skin very reflective. Same thing with the nose around the highest highlight. There's going to be an area where you can see the richness texture of the skin and that's where I use this brush. And then in the background, I'll use my glitter brush to kind of fade that highlight away. And then in this area, you can see here, this is where I would use the sparkle brush for that, that uh, cheekbone highlight there and let it fade into the rest of the cheek there. It's very, very crucial to have brushes like this that aren't really, they don't really act like stamps. That way it's easy for you to work with them and continually build up layers so that you can have your portraits looking as um, realistic and natural as possible. You can see here, I can also use it for the forehead as well. Another area I use these brushes are the lips, as you can see here. I like to add a little bit of glitter to them. It makes them feel fuller. Um, the eyes, I will sometimes use it depending if I'm going for a little bit more of a stylized style. <laughs> um, and I'll kind of give a galaxy eye kind of appearance um, to some of my portraits. I think I have an example. This place I used these brushes as well. They're a little bit low resolution here because I really needed to scale the brushes up um, in order to get the, uh, the correct size, but it's not something you notice when you look at the image full size. I'm gonna hide Billie Eilish and create a new layer so that we can talk about the next two brushes. So I'll switch my color to black and then we can talk about the soft skin brush. This is my favorite brush of all time <laughs> because I love to shade skin and this brush has enabled me to do it almost as well. Actually, I'd say about as good as I can with a traditional pencil and paper. And so this brush has a very, very nice, subtle, but rich texture. You can see it's very noisy, um, but it's very smooth and it acts like the airbrush in Photoshop with some texture on it. And so what I like about this brush is that you can bring the opacity down and really work with it and slowly build up tone um, while having the texture there all the time. Something that I don't really like in digital art portraits is that the skin can tend to look very rubbery and all of the textures can end up looking the same if you don't pay attention. Um, with a brush like this, you can actually keep the skin looking unique and having a rich texture and giving it you know, that realistic feel that brings so much, um, you know, attention and 
familiarity and um, relatability to your portraits. Um, one tip that I'll give you if you buy ten, if you want to buy these brushes is I'll recommend that you use this brush as a blending brush as well. It's very effective as a blending brush. So I'll show you an example here. I'll make a dark zone and then I'll go ahead and select my blending tool. Soft skin is already selected and I'll try and blend it out. And you're going to notice here really quickly that the blended tone is very, very smooth. It's almost perfectly smooth. It still keeps a lot of texture there, which is great, but eventually it will get perfectly smooth. Now, you don't really want that in too much of your portraits. Um, if you want to use these brushes, you want to keep the texture right. So what I like to do is I like to use the blending tool. I like to blend using shorter strokes so that I don't end up with just something like this. You know, you don't want something like that that's unnatural. You want to use shorter strokes to kind of push the colors around like this. You can see the uh, white of the paper and the canvas kind of bleeds onto the tone and still keeps that texture there. And so when you do something like that, you can have something that's fairly blended out, but you have an idea of what you want. So let's say this is a gradient transition on the cheekbone and you want to add some texture back, I recommend that you used you use the soft skin brush very lightly and add some texture back like this. And you'll notice that it's starting to get kind of evened out as a darker tone. So in order to kind of avoid that, you can come back with the eraser tool with the soft skin brush and lighten those areas back very lightly. Always work in layers. Just let the brush do the work. And you'll notice that the texture is back the way it was, even though you blended it. So that's a technique I often use um, when I'm kind of approaching the ending of my skin rendering. As an example, I'll show you in my last portrait of my female gender bend of Zima Blue from um, Love, Death and Robots. This area up here on her shoulder that's receding into the background was difficult because it looked very kind of fake compared to the rest of her skin. So what I did was, after I blended it away, I worked with the brushes to kind of bring that texture back. And you can see the highlights of the light reflecting from the upper part of her um, chest muscles there are showing. And in the shoulder here, you can see there's some more reflection there and it gives kind of a richness to the skin. And that's something that I really worked hard on to make sure everywhere on her skin there was texture and it didn't look, um, you know, fake and blended out and too digital arty, as I like to call it. I'll show you an example of a previous artwork I did that I didn't really like that had that effect. So if I go back here, you can see a drawing I did. I actually did this in Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. This was a long time ago, but you can see the skin, it doesn't really have any texture to it at all. Um, this is, I know, I mean, I'm still proud of this rendering, but it's still, you know, especially in the lips area, it feels kind of weird and fake. Um, it's th that program was excellent in blending, but I kind of went way too crazy with it. And uh, I had this effect that I now am not really a fan of and don't even get me started with that hair. That's terrible. <laughs> but if we scroll back up to our example canvas here, I'll talk about the last brush. So the last brush is simply called the hard skin brush. And so it's exactly what it sounds like. It's this it's very similar to the soft skin, but it has a hard edge to it. So this is very useful when you want to create an edge in your skin tones and skin transitions. So very often the bridge of the nose will be an area like that. And um, you want to be able to paint a nice rich skin texture like this, but still be able to create a hard edge to it. Um, something like that is quite difficult to do with a soft skin brush and can be um, time consuming and frustrating. So I wanted to include this brush here. This is also a brush I like to use to lay down the initial tones for the skin um, because I'm not really worrying about keeping it smooth. I just want to create a good landscape of dark and light values on the face. So if I play with it here, you'll notice I can still create a fairly nice gradient of tone by just using the light pencil pressure. But I can quickly add pressure and you can do that, you know, I think you've done in all of your art classes to create a pencil gradient of value. And you can see there's, there's a lot of hard edges here, but 
If you were painting and you wanted this area to be soft, you know you could easily just come back with the soft skin brush and flick around here. And you would have a fairly decent transition without losing too much of the texture. So an area, as our final example, I would do this in. I'll just go back to my Zima Blue Portrait. So an area I would use this brush in would be an area like this. So I would paint the skin for her cheek bone here and use that hard skin brush and blend some of it away so that's a little smooth. Getting this quick of a transition would be fairly difficult um, using the soft skin brush. It's a similar thing here with the uh, corner of her temple bone. It's not really um, something that I would want to use with a soft brush because it would just look like um, it would just look like there's a highlight there without actually being a contour, which is something that you'll see is evident on many different um, skulls. Another area you'll see me use it is like here on example for our breasts. You'll see that that fairly sharp transition of light and dark. This is something that you I eventually worked in and started painting the darks in to make it more apparent. And you'll use you want to keep that skin texture, of course. You can't really tell, but it's there. And you want to use that brush to be able to get that harder edge and then come back with the highlights there. Um, this is something that is really key. You want to, to be able to have skin, you want smooth transitions like these areas, but you also want to have harder transitions like here and in the back of her jaw as well. So this concludes my kind of demo on my skin brushes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to show you really quick how you can get them. Chrome or Safari works exactly the same. Um, the link is um, gumroad.com slash ergojosh. You can come to this website. Um, you can see I've already got some five star ratings. So thank you so much to those of you who've already purchased the brushes. But you can see they're $2 right now for two weeks. I've got a little bit of a sale going on here. And you can purchase them. And as soon as you do on an iPad, you can download them to your files. And once you open Procreate, do not hit the import or plus button here. That is not how you import brushes to Procreate. What you want to do is you want to actually go to a canvas or make a new one if you haven't already. Then go to your brushes and then you'll see a plus icon up here. It's not showing up here on my iPad because I'm testing iOS 13, the new iPad OS beta, and it's kind of wonky. So it's there, but I'm going to press into that empty space, but you're going to see a plus icon right here. So if you press that, that will open a new brush. And so when you do that, you can have the option to import there. And from there, that's where you're going to import your brushes. And once they're on your files, you just click there and you'll be done. Um, once you import them, you'll notice that they're here in the imported category. Sometimes they'll be renamed to just untitled and you need to rename them back or sometimes they'll keep their name. That's just a little bug with Procreate. Um, just wanted to let you know that ahead of time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you get the brushes and I hope that you love them if you've gotten them already. And I will be doing a contest on these brushes if you are interested. So on YouTube, if you go to my community page and you scroll down a little bit, um, I made a post about this contest here. You can look at all the details and make sure that you send them to the ergojoshart at gmail.com email. And the winners will receive a $10 Amazon gift card and copies for the rest of my brushes <laughs> that I have. So um, if you want to, you can enter that contest. You can draw whatever you want. Just make sure you use Procreate and use my brushes. But yeah, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching.